What's going on guys? It's Bucky again and welcome to another amazing chemistry tutorial. In this video I want to talk to you guys about storing chemicals. Now typically whenever you're buying containers for storage you want to buy a mixture of plastic and glass and you also want to buy a variety of different sizes to store different amounts of chemicals. Now here are some of my legal chemicals and a couple tips I have for storing chemicals. First of all, make sure to store them in proper containers. Whenever you buy chemicals online, they typically don't come in the best containers. For example, my copper sulfate and my potassium chlorate, whenever I bought them, they pretty much came in like a plastic bag. So obviously, I moved them to a little bit better storage containers. Another thing, of course, make sure to label everything. A lot of these uh, chemicals look the same. For example, this potassium chlorate and you know boric acid they pretty much look the same as you know baking soda so if they weren't labeled it would just be a guessing game not very good and the last you know kind of mini tip I have is make sure not to store reactive chemicals next to each other if something happens like you have a leak in the bottle you don't want it reacting and causing an explosion so none of these chemicals right here of course you have some reactions like your vinegar and your baking soda or your uh, Sulfuric acid can react with potassium chlorate, but they really need to be heated up to properly react with each other. So right now, I have everything separated in a proper way, and all my very reactive stuff, I don't even store in here. I keep completely separate. Now, aside from storing your bulk chemicals, it's also useful to have a smaller variety of bottles and jars. So for example, these ones right here... Whenever you synthesize a new chemical or if you're just playing around and you make something in a small amount, it's useful to store these in a smaller bottle instead of, you know, a big jar. So that's what these are right here. And another cool thing is they're actually really cheap. You usually get them by the dozen or a 20 pack. For example, I think these ones came in a 20 pack and I think this entire thing was under $10. So it's nice to have a mixture of plastic and glass and also like I said a variety of different sizes. Now the last thing I want to mention before I let you guys go is be careful whenever you're storing concentrated acids or very concentrated bases because concentrated bases like uh, sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide they can actually eat through glass so make sure that you don't store very concentrated bases in glass containers and another thing is Whenever you have a concentrated acid, they can actually eat through certain types of plastic. So just make sure, you know, do a quick Google on the chemical and see the proper storing procedures. And that's going to make sure that, you know, of course, your chemical doesn't eat through your container. 